we're seeing futures continue um, to decline this morning. The S&P 500 is now looking to be down about 42 at the open. Um, and so when we think about the difficulties that Europe could face, you mentioned all these insecurities, food, energy, et cetera. I mean, in the past, and I'm, I'm not trying to stoke alarm, alarmist fears or anything like that, but um, in certain parts of the world, that could lead to political instability. Um, how should we view this in terms of the longer term implications and, and the fact that that actually makes the U.S. on a relative basis look like a much better place to invest, even though we are seeing declines here in the equity markets? Yeah, you know, in relative terms, it's good for us. You know, it's the old cleanest dirty shirt in the global economy, and we are the cleanest dirty shirt. In absolute terms, it's not good. Um, but the U.S. market is all about pricing in a slowdown and pricing in the fact that the Fed is forced to hike rates into a slowdown. As Mike just said, we have a very unusual set of circumstances, and one of them is the Fed being so late um, to its hiking cycle. So the market is trying to internalize the slowdown and the Fed hiking into that slowdown. And that's exactly what you're seeing playing out in different segments of the market. There are silver linings of this, three in particular, but it doesn't feel good in the process. How do you think we've weather um, Q2 earnings season? I'm wondering because, you know, in terms of guidance, companies really have a dilemma here because we do see um, a rollover, you know, in, in many, many commodity prices um, from spring highs. At the same time, they will not be rewarded for going out and saying that they have more clarity because who knows if this sort of rollover and in inflation that we've seen is, is transitory or, or long lasting. You're absolutely right. If you're sitting in corporate America right now, your cost side looks clearer because you get, you get a sense that a lot of your input prices have peaked and are coming down. So on the expenditure side, it looks better. But on the revenue side, you now have a major uncertainty about demand because high and persistent inflation is destroying demand. So I suspect that you'll find that most corporate CFOs are going to be cautious about the outlook, not on account of the cost side, which is the story for last year, but on account of the revenue side. Mm -hmm. What do you make, Mohammed, of um, the, the decline that we've seen in the Treasury market in terms of yields? Um, you know, we were firmly above 3 percent, now we're firmly below that. And, and it, is that a good, good thing ultimately? It's certainly good for the equity markets, at least for the time being. Yeah, and I would look, Melissa, if I may, at two stands. They're mm -hmm. basically flat. Yeah. We're back to, I think, one basis point, which tells you that the marketplace is looking at a slowdown and is looking at the Fed hiking into the slowdown. I mean, th this is the th consistent theme throughout all the markets. Um, Mike Santori took us through different parts of the equity market. It is the same story within government bonds. It is the same story between in corporate bonds. It is this notion of how do you price in the Fed hiking into a slowdown. And that's exactly what's happening in, in the government bond market as well. That's actually a good thing, though, isn't it? The fact that markets are, in fact, now starting to price it in. Or do you think that equity markets have not priced it in, that we're seeing it priced in elsewhere, but not fully in equities? No one knows whether it's fully or not. Um, you know, I'll go back to what Joe said earlier. Who's leading who? Is it the Fed that's leading the markets? And therefore, you can hope for a soft tish landing? Or is it, as I believe, the markets leading the Fed, which means that, once again, the Fed will be late to recognizing the change dynamics? Um, that's a really important judgment. If you believe that it's the Fed, it's the Fed leading the markets, then you would be more optimistic about markets in general than if you believe it's the markets leading the Fed. Do you think it's the latter? I do. I think this is the third time in the last 12 months where the markets are significantly ahead of the Fed. The Fed is still six months behind us in terms of inflation is not transitory. Finally, they've realized that, and we've got a hike, hike. And the market's saying, wait a minute, this is a slowing economy. You may not need to hike as much as you think. This unconditional commitment, to use Chair Powell's term, this unconditional commitment has to be qualified by what's happening to the real economy. That's what the market is telling the Fed right now. 